Welcome everyone to another Gaming on the Brain playthrough. Today we've got uh, one that's been on my list for a little while, Space Invaders 95 or yeah. Akin Vader as it's also known. And uh, yeah, you don't really need much introduction for this one, do you? You might uh, notice that Mark is speaking in a very different accent. This is not actually the Mark that you normally know. It's a very different one with a very much deeper, more manly version of his uh, older accent. It's either that or he just was out last night and uh, yeah, I reckon a lot of singing. Might be the latter, noise, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, I was out uh, watching Guns to Roses tribute band. Yeah, yeah so, so any fans out there, you know, give a shout out, of course. Um, I haven't played through this game fully at all, and it looks fantastic. Like, I've always been a fan of the series. I mean, it's part of the Space and Vader series, obviously. But um, to see it finally in the flesh and trying to have a, uh, a two-player playthrough, I think it's going to be quite awesome. Like, so. It's a good game, mate. It is. I've played through it once, completed it. I uh, can't remember how long it is, but we'll know by the end of this video. Yeah, we do. Uh, Great, man. We'll do it to bosses and everything in these type of games. I mean, I'll, I said for I played through Space Invaders 91 on the Amiga as well, which is a great conversion, not just the arcade game. Um, and back then, back in, the, back in Super Space Invaders, Space Invaders 91, having uh, Majestic 12. Majestic 12, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, having all that. I think it's not called Space Invaders 91. I think I'm getting that confused with the Mega Drive version, actually. You which is a very right. different game, so something we might get to at some point if people like. Uh, watching videos of very classic uh, Space Invaders. In fact, I think we might keep the very earliest Space Invaders games for possibly some sort of a dual matchup at some point, maybe, you know, like maybe score, score attack. attack. So I think we should get there. Let's get it on the board, bro. Let's put some credits in. So, yeah, released obviously in 1995. Yeah, great graphic. Yeah, I mean, what you expect. Or title. Man. And with the choice of, uh, like I say, I've had very little time with this game myself, uh, mate, but. Um, well, I'm playing as a toilet. Cause That's why not? probably great. I mean, the end of the day, I suppose you can catch them. And what, what nice. I will say, if uh, if I'm rubbish, blame it on the hangover. Just blame it on the hangover. Not, yeah, nothing to do with my skills <laughs> <laughs> or lack of. Oh. I think what I love about this is though it's kept the simplicity as well. Though I mean, there's a there's a cabinet out that me and we, the three of us played. Me, you and Logan a little while back, about last year, where. You're shooting into the screen, you had guns and that, you had actual guns. That was oh, yeah, I did, yeah, the Space Invaders sit-down like, cabinet. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Like, that like was, a uh, dot screen, mm -hmm. The series has got long legs, like, very long legs. Whoa, well, missed. Missed the cannonball. That was the hangover there. But I mean, can luck, why not? The thing is, I've noticed, though, I mean, the city, I mean, obviously, Space Invaders was, was all about uh, 1978, the year I was born. Um. Uh, you know, and uh, I mean, we've played um, in, I mean, probably literally, literally hundreds of different variants of Space of Air style games, you know. Um, but the actual main series, I mean, I I'm not actually sure how many instalments they are. Because you've got Space Invaders Part 2, you've got the Return the Invaders. And the, um, we're talking about the old games now, we've gone back to like the original, the, the early 80s still. And then you've got sort of like rip offs and spin offs to tell like which ones are official, which ones are not. Invaders Part 3, where you had splitting aliens, I remember, right? Um, it, 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 Jesus, man, you know, it's not till about like 1991 when, uh, or 1990 when. Um, Super Space Invaders, also called Majestic 12, came out. Uh, introduced bosses in a totally new style, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously we've got boss here now, so. So one other thing, this game, if you hold the uh, fire button down here, yeah, you get a charge shot, shot yeah. basically, yeah. Uh, every it, character has to The game clearly out. builds on Super Space Invaders in the best possible ways, like, but I'm sure there's an interim game, mate. I'm sure there's another game between Majestic 12 and this game. Do you not know, like from about 92, 93 maybe? Um, I'll have to have a look, we'll have a look, we'll have a look later on. It's just, uh, I'm sure there's something else out there. Oh, 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 I took a hit. <laughs> but Space Wars 95 is also called Akin Beardo as well, so, Akin, Akin Beardo, so Akin if we've seen that and if the two versions are quite different, it's possible I thought it would, one was a sequel to the other, or the dates maybe. No, it's the same game. Um, it, it wants to be Darius as well. Aye. <laughs> this is a... Uh, aye, the levels do get crazy. You, you were thinking about uh, Twin Bay there for a second, weren't you? Oh, I was actually aye. Parodius, yeah. Well, that's, a, that's another series of the Twin Bay games uh, and Parodius games by Konami. Definitely want to give yeah. them a shot sometime. Uh, just just for how absolutely mental they all are. I mean, Christ. Aye, this game's a bit insane, mate. 
But it's a nice easy one to start out with, I think. You know what it is? I, I think I've seen this in one cabinet back in the day. Obviously, by 1995, the arcades were starting to slow down a little bit, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, sad times, like. Sad Very time. sad times. Actually, uh, last night, we um, went into Arcade 64, I think it was called, in yeah. Newcastle, just to grab a Oh, you went in? Yeah, I went in. It's, uh, it's excellent. Just full of really good arcade machines. It, it, it's is it really pay, is, do you pay like 20 quid in the door or something? Uh, we, you just walk in, but um, if you have to buy tokens. Aye, that's all right. But how much is a token? Is it, or do you buy a set of tokens? Does that make sense? I think, it, I think it's something like... Uh, 20 tokens or something, 8 quid or something, I think it is. Right. Don't hold us to that, whoever's listening and knows better. But, uh, yeah, we, I didn't buy any tokens, we didn't play it, we just got a couple of drinks. So I wanted to have a look, that's all. I've heard good things about life, I've heard really good things about life. Haven't they got like, consoles as well? I think they did, actually, yeah. Oh, I died. Don't drink in this, don't drink and drive, people. Yeah. Hair of the dog for me. Oop. Yeah, but, um you know what it is, oh mate? I am so, so happy that there's so many um, of these these arcades popping up now. It's not just a niche thing. I, I mean, it's, it's, there's lads at work who who liked old games back in the day or who aren't that bothered now or have modern consoles, and they know about this. So yeah. they're seeing this, these these arcades advertised on Facebook. I mean, the original retro arcade for me, and it's not in the UK, sadly, is probably Galloping Ghost. I mean, you know them, people who know Galloping Ghost. I mean, a, a, obviously a big and very well-known arcade, a retro enthusiast, which uh, not only gets retro games, but gets a lot of prototypes, you know, like uh, yeah. P- uh, Primal Rage being, uh, Primal Rage 2 being one of the uh, most well-known, and the Judge Dredd cabinet and that, you know. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's great stuff, like, and, and you don't have to go that far. I mean, you don't have to have prototypes, because it's bloody expensive and hard to find. Yeah. Uh, but just having, like, you know, getting a double dragon cab and a bone axe cab, get a Space Invaders of Wonder Boy, Get you know, get get about ten machines started off, you know, and take it from there. It's spelling the word bonus, I don't know. Hey? Yeah, bonus. Let's just spell the word bonus. Oh, that's because there was a bonus around. I didn't realise. Perfect. Well done. Perfect all. Boss. The huge battle shit is great. This like, uh, uh, oh, it's great. And now that looks very parodious though. Okay. Uh, sorry, very uh, uh, twin bee. Twin bee, yeah. <coughs> is it not the same? Is twin bee and parodious not the same thing? Or am I just still drunk? Oh, cool. You see what they're doing? Now, what I like about this is they've taken the Phoenix approach. Yeah, you've got to shoot Yeah, I thought crap. this was a great little nod back to a game that obviously Taito didn't release, you know? Um, but Phoenix obviously being a contemporary for Space Invaders, Galaxian, you know, uh, Gallagher. Um, it's just nice to see, you know, this little mechanic be, be here, you know? What's left? Just this, this sushi to your death, Dave. Hmm. On to round three. Down by the beach. Just hear the old sound effects and that and all, oh man, you know, and, and um, it wouldn't be space of it if it didn't have the original sound, like, would it? Oh no, no, no. I definitely wouldn't mind spending a bit of time on uh, Space of His 91 or on the Genesis Mega Drive. Because it is, like I said uh, already, about 12 times tonight. It's a very different game from Space Invaders, uh, from Super Space Invaders, yeah. also I said, also Majestic 12. Um, I mean, it's, it's a different game, probably made by a different developer as well. But I want to look at it because I think it only came out on the Mega Drive as well. So, uh, very unusual because I remember like, some levels have creators. So you can be at an angle when you take you take things down, and that's quite right. Because it seems to be the only game in the series that's actually used that mechanic. It's such a simple thing as well. I think that does make a difference. It's less space and there's more mercs. I don't know. I know. The enemies hide by the technical plan. What was? I remember a game. Oh, it was it was super space and man. There's a hidden level, right, on the Amiga version, which I thought was amazing this, that a computer game, which was very rare at the time, actually built on the arcade machine. 
and right. it had like a level where you were on a beach fighting soldiers coming towards you. Alright. And the boss was like a tank or something, you know? Or the mothership was a tank, something like that. Right. Really good version, from version of the, the, the arcade. Ah, oh, got him. But this to me is exactly what the arcade is about. Pure shooting action, switch your brain off, have fun, um, great music, great sounds, great graphics, and just, just, just crack on, just have fun, you know, and there's nothing, there's nothing stopping me, oh. you know. I'm not sure what I mean, I'm the doing. pinnacle, like, the pinnacle of oh, the nasty little things, aren't they? Really. I know, it's tricky. Got him. That made short work of them. I thought that was you there, but we'll be the same uh, uh, I'll tell you what I do miss, my mate. I really miss. I miss. There's no cows. There's no cows. <laughs> There's no cow stage. We need to play Space Invaders, uh, uh, Super Space Invaders just for the cows, like. You do, I. I like that, too. They even thank you, you know, when you say them. <laughs> moo. Thank moo. No, it's a thank you. Oh, it is, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Did you play any of the um, the mid 90s sort of remakes for the PlayStation? You know, the new yeah. Gallagher. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. Owen and Asteroids? Yeah. I like that, I completed that. It was quite uh, quite a good game. Like I, I think I played the new Gallagher as well, something like that. I, I didn't, but it looked good. It got bad reviews, no, but to be honest, but I, I watched a long play of it and it looked like uh, it looked great. I mean, it was a decent. It did what it was meant to do. I think people are just like people will really turn the nose up at like uh, retro style games by the late nineties, definitely. And it's like, yeah, but it, it could be about mechanics as well and about fun. Why can't it just be about fun? It doesn't have to be all graphics and story. I mean, and which is what I like about the, the even now in a way is that we've now made room for this. We've now made room for this uh, return to retro. So a game like this game right here would um, be right at home, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, Retro's getting a lot of love now. I always predicted it. I always predicted this happening, though. I always uh, thought eventually... Oh, yeah. um, I think people are starting to get tired of having to update this. The thing is, though, well, you can get your kids. You can't get your kids, Mark. You can't get your kids into, like, a, a modern story epic. You kind of do that. I mean, you know, with viol like, violence and, and graphic, sh graphic and murder and crap, you kind of get young kids in, but you could have like Ellie playing something like this, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And she'll just, she'll know what to do. She'll be able to play it. Well, I mean, in my experience, all the kids want to play is like Fortnite and um, FIFA. Which is still. <coughs> well, I mean, FIFA <coughs> found, but like Fortnite and stuff, though. It's fairly simple still, though. Ah, oh, yeah. But, uh, I mean, Tomb Raider, for example. You know, the, new, the, new, the, new, uh, the new Tomb Raider, like the newest Tomb Raider yeah. trilogy. Um, the first one, the Definitive Edition, which has just came on Game Pass there. So the Splathouse, I, I says to Logan yesterday, I says, you, you need to play that because it's one of the best games of like, the last 10 years, you know? Aye. Um, and he's like, oh yeah. But he's got no interest in actually playing through it. It's just like, you know, trying to get them into something different. It's very difficult. Here's the thing, here's a question, right? Here's one thing, right? Obviously, we're in our 40s now, right? We place we like have nostalgia for stuff from the 80s and 90s and on at least say 20 years ago and that you know but like i wonder if like the youngins of the few like logan logan's generation is is he going to look back on fortnite which he probably will i think he, he, that'll be like that'll be his game but you imagine if were, player, though, well, that, that goes back to the argument that would well uh, a conversation we need to have for for a podcast maybe yeah you know which we've talked about i would which is going to be very sad because ah. I don't know what they'll do. I mean, will they re-release those? I mean, I'm sure the source code ex exists. Like, it, it, you know, in 20, 30 years' time, I'm sure that this stuff would still be archived, you know what I mean? Somebody would have it. It wouldn't just like, oh, well, I've lost it, it's gone. Well, You'll I never mean, be able to play that game again. The game it will still be on people's hard drives. I don't even mean that, mate. I mean that your developers and the produ producers will still hold it. Not just the rights, but they'll hold the game somewhere and they can, re I can republish it any time. I can re like, repost it onto a... Onto a, um, a service 
a streaming service anytime they want, you know what I mean? I think, I mean, you're talking about like live service games, I think the way they've developed the series is one Not really live service games, it's just downloadable games in general. Oh yeah, I'm still talking about Fortnite. Oh. I will. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Fortnite is one, one example, but like, obviously, obviously live service games, but even just downloadable games, where obviously you own the game, it's on a hard drive, but if you didn't download it or you delete it at one point and for some reason weren't able to get it again, you know, it'd be nice to think that somewhere in the future, if it was popular enough, it can be downloaded again with permission, you know, by the developers or, or from the developers, you know? Well, I mean, um, <laughs> both like Sony and Microsoft and, you know, Steam and everywhere, it's, you can still get games from like 360 and PS3 generation downloaded, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. You'd, might not be able to buy them anymore because they're, they're no longer in the store because um, they're not supporting like that system or whatever but the games are still there to download like but not all of them are some do get taken away and you never see them again but for example oh. you know, like double dragon on the xbox 360 which is that right and now the thing is that's 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 probably one of the poorest examples with news which is the one i use online but obviously double dragon exists it's just the arcade game the facelift um so I love to use that one because it's still its own version in a way. Yeah. But obviously, even just unique games, like for instance, say Wonder of the Dragons, which is not a good game. No. Double Dragon 2, Wonder of the Dragons is not a great game. But there might be three people out there who love that game, mate. There's probably someone out there who does like Wonder of the Dragons. It's like, you didn't download the time and you can never get that game. It's probably gone now. It's over 10 years that that was on. So I bet you that is gone now and you can't get that at all. And it's yeah, like. I wouldn't have thought so. But imagine that. It's like somebody. That was still a game and that it's like lost to time. Like Space Invaders is 44 years old, I was going to say, 78. So 44 year old, right? And you can still play it online and you can still buy a cabinet. You can buy a PCB and still play an original Space Invaders arcade game. Yeah, you can, I think most of them are probably bootlegs. But uh, no, you can't, you can get them. They're still existing out there in good condition, sort of that. Yeah. Worth an absolute fortune, right? They're, they're not, do you know what it is? It's, they're, they're generally not considered that expensive, on, depending on condition. If it's used, arcade sort of used condition, like fag burns and a few dicks yeah. and nicks and dings, you might pay about 500 quid or so. No, that's not uh, you'll not pay a thousand for a Space Invaders 1, the original. Uh, not if it's just average condition. I mean, excellent condition up by, you could be talking right. going to four figures and that then. And again, that'll be down to individual demand, mate, you know, and, and what, the, what the owner's prepared to sell it for and what the buyer's prepared to pay, I suppose. You yeah. know what I mean? Just for individual example, like that game I sold today, you know. Uh, normally wouldn't go that much. But uh, it's just not having the choice at all, mate. I think um, it, that's why it goes back to something I originally thought about. In 30, 40 years' time, I was still going to be playing these types of games and games in the 80s because these are still accessible. I think Would you, As much as it'll get harder and harder, even in 30, 40 years' time, some of the hardware will still exist because people are constantly be maintaining it. You know, like for retro arcades, yeah. uh, repairing it, replacing uh, chips and programs, they're backed up everywhere, so you can actually take the original boards or reproductions of the boards and put... Um, Make them look like the original with the original game, so like a facelift, you know? Yeah. Like if you're getting plastic surgery, think of that way. Um, but it's technically original because it's, a, it's the closest thing you can get to it. When when the original's really. Like Suicide Batteries on Capcom, we know there's ways around that now, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's still a pain in the arse, but it's a fixable thing. And as long as it's fixable, you can you can do something better. But if it's. If a game has gone for good and the publishers won't be released it, or they've lost the source code, even worse. Then you're fucked. You're like, that is it. That game is gone forever. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, we've got to kill it, have we? Little fucker. Good caught. Good, good caught. There we go. No more invading for you. <laughs> Round five. Then it's the end. It's the last Save one. The to Mother Star. Oh. I can't believe I got invaded, Glenn. I'm blaming you. <laughs> if I didn't I... have this hangover. Eh? If I didn't have this hangover, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah, if you are, it's not a good point, mate. <laughs> I know, I know the feel. You wait, right? You'll just feel double worse tomorrow. Oh, no, that's not worried. I know. Because I feel great on the night. 
I've done it where I've like topped myself up and I feel class, I feel happy, I don't feel drunk, I feel like I can take on the world now. And I got in the bed with a smile on my face thinking, God, you've avoided this one, lad, you know, and I don't, I don't, you don't, like, Hello, you, have, you have to pay it back either way or something. Completely destroyed, bonus, nice. I'm guessing there's 30 stages. I remember there being like more Easter eggs, but I don't know, unless I just missed them. Unless. More what? Like Easter eggs in this. Well, what you mean like hidden stuff? Like hidden levels? Yeah, or, like, or, or like hidden, hidden There's not much in the way of power-ups, man, is there? No, it's not. I mean, space, super space invaders, all these power-ups at you, constantly. Uh, do you remember the weapon, the laser that literally takes out the full column? Uh, you, you don't even press the fire button on the Omega. It lit, well, you might not on the arcade, I can't remember, but it literally just comes straight out and you just, just push left and right, mate. It's the most floating core mechanic. You can wipe out a full level in like three seconds. It, it doesn't. It's not even that rare either. So I'm just randomly going right. We'll get it. The you best. Know. The best to get on. This is a fallen ball, <laughs> which wipes out like a full row, you know, like a full column of enemies. Aye. Little green man with bombs. Why not? You know what I mean? It's bomber man, isn't it? Almost. Shh. Boss suit. Right. Or Dino Blaster. That, well, do you know what Dino Blaster is though? That was the Amiga version. Uh, the arcade version also called Dino Blaster. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. no. I, I know um, versions of that for the, the PAL, like home computer version that were Dino Blaster. It's a hell of a version on the Amiga, not yeah. the game. Is this the final boss? Oh, it's a giant version, isn't it? Look. It is now. Oh, <laughs> Christ. That's class. Now, for some reason, I've seen this before. Yeah, it would be. Used the other stuff, I would imagine. Two. I think it'd be watching Future Armor, maybe. It does a little pop on. Oh, there. There they are. Yeah. Oh. Two. Oh, oh, you got this. I got a little rear Oh, I'm laughing. Uh oh. Oh, it's one of them, they're indestructible. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to invade Mark. He is. Oh, I've just realised he's getting close to the bottom of the screen. Oh, I've, cha I've changed it to something else now. Ah, you got the same I'm a pink squid thing, I think, or something. Shoot him! Don't let him invade. Oh, he's going back, though. Uh, he's going back up the screen a bit, hasn't he? Oh, there he goes. I think he's nearly dead. There is a sweet spot, but it's bloody hard to find it. Definitely don't want to be standing in the way of that. Oh, it's it's some fucking battle under them. Oh, no. Oh, he's got to go. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's gone bang. Is there a little one that comes out? I don't believe it's dead. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. King UFO is escaping. I feel bad for the giant space invader. I do, it was just a tool of their machinations, isn't it? <laughs> oh, congratulations, you destroyed final weapon of invaders, then the earth is saved. Final weapon. Big walking cube. The super space invader. And we are at the goal, all down clear. What do you reckon? Loved it. Great, simple, gamer. fun, addictive, daft, uh, tight all around. Yeah, 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 definitely. Perfect, perfection. Proper arcade game. Lots of characters now. Or five. No, five? Is it five? There's more? It's ten? Ten, aye. It's ten, aye. It was only, well, it was five ships to pick from, I think, wasn't it? He was? I think it was five different ships to pick from. I wonder if they were, if they're just pilots, but like I never yeah. I thought it was gonna be five. Well unless it's five hidden characters, like. I think it's played player one and player two's characters. Ah, uh, it is man, of course it dog cats, yeah. Yeah. Dark haired, blonde haired, aye. Uh, green pumpkin uh, poo emoji. Uh, poo, poo, poo emoji thing, aye. 
shit emoji, pink fucking blamange emoji. <laughs> Don't know the names. I'm sorry for bastardising these names, Mike, because we don't know the names of the characters. I yeah. definitely don't. Sorry, Taito. Right, sorry, Taito. Watching. Sorry, uh, people who might or might not be watching. Really mm. enjoy that, like. That was good. See you again. See you again. Bye bye. <laughs> yep. Who do you think's got the highest score? I didn't actually look. I'm not feeling very good. Oh, we didn't look, no, we didn't, did we? No. Does it come up now? Yep. Oh, oh it's me. There you go, Mark. Oh, feel good? See, there I feel you go. so much better now. You, at least you can go to bed with your hangover and smile at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it all worthwhile. It does. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that one, folks. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Till the next care. one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.